Welcome to my Sunday learning studio. Pretty fancy, isn't it? Lights, camera, and action. All the action happens right here on the interviewer's chair. Last week on episode one of my interview with Raylene Castle, the former CEO of Rugby Australia and the current CEO of Sport New Zealand, we spoke about how Raylene got her career started. Many of you reached out to me and gave me feedback about the content of the show and how you perceive Raylene during her time as CEO of Rugby Australia. Many of you gave me feedback, especially as Australian rugby fans. Some of those comments were positive, some of those comments were very constructive. And I really, really, really appreciate that. Oh, I really, really appreciate that because I believe feedback keeps the dream on track. So thanks for the feedback, everybody. But today is part two of my interview with Ray Lee. And today we speak about all things leadership. I got this part of the conversation going by asking Raylene about the question slash the topic, will we see more women leaders in the sports industry? There's no reason why women can't step forward into these leadership roles. There's no doubt though that um, you know, having a sponsor is important, having um, those male, um, they don't have to be male, they could be female, but certainly in the traditional uh, background having, um, so that, you know, those corridor conversations or phone calls that happen is, oh, I'm looking for someone to be the CEO of this organisation. Um, who would you recommend? Who do you think's good? Who do you think's capable? Is making sure that some of the names that get put forward in those types of conversations are the women's names and the men's names. Because that's the informal, you know, conversations that happen that are really important to set the expectations from well-respected people. Um, and that was, has been an important part of, of the work that I've done to build those networks so that you do have those people um, that will talk positively and support you in your career um, aspirations. Um, and, you know, having that, that group of sponsors that are prepared to get in, in behind and support no, I don't mean sponsors as in people that are going to put their names on the front of jerseys. I mean, you know, mentors and sponsors that are going yes, to definitely. help you step forward and not only help you get the job, but when you get the job, actually have your back and give you the good advice and support you and help you um, through those early challenging times as we all do when we start new jobs. So, um, uh, you know, I definitely think some of the roles that I've done have meant that there's young women that now believe it's possible and they've seen me do it and now they go, right, now I've seen that I believe it can happen. I think that's helpful. But you also need that, that support to get you, um, you know, on the ladder and then support you when you get the job. In one or two sentences, how would you best describe the Raylene Castle leadership style? It's inclusive. Um, I like um, seeing people improve and, and become better uh, than you know, what they were when I started working with them. I'm not afraid to um, employ people that are better than me or smarter than me if they're subject matter experts. I think the, the challenge of leadership is to bring that group of diverse people and personalities together to make them a high performing team. So that's certainly uh, the focus that I have when I'm CEO of an organization. Work-life balance, you, you work in an extremely passionate environment. Everybody in New Zealand loves sport. Everybody in Australia loves sport, but you need to tune out. So how do you tune out and just get away from all the noise? I really enjoy the beach, certainly over the summertime when the weather's good. Walking on the beach and swimming in the salt water, I think is a really good, good for the soul. Um, I like reading if I get a chance, so actually getting away and being able to, um, you know, to read a book and, and, and use your imagination in a different way. Um, and I, you know, I like watching sports. So actually not being the person that's in the corporate box um, where you are still working, um, actually being the person that's sitting in the stand with your mates, um, actually watching sport and enjoying it. Um, and just being one of the fans is, is something that I really enjoy. So I try and try and do that as well, even though I don't get as much chance as I, as I, use, as I used to, as I like to. Are you reading any particular book now? Yeah, there's a couple of things. Um, actually, I was just, um, someone just recommended to me the Russian affair, which is about the whole Russian doping situation, which I got recommended um, yesterday. So I'm about to pick that up and have a look at that. What's your advice to any person, whether they're male or female, who aspires to be in a C-level sports management role, especially in a sports mad culture like Australia or New Zealand? What's your advice to them? I think... Um, 
spending the time researching the role, understanding what it is that they're specifically looking for as a skill set. Uh, if it is sport that you're passionate about, don't be afraid. Don't jump in too early necessarily. Um, you don't have to, your first job doesn't have to be your sport job. Maybe going and getting some of that corporate, really good grounding and corporate experience before you go in to sport is a good idea. Um, definitely doing some governance work. So if you can volunteer on your local club um, um, committee and understand what it's like to run the books and know what it's like to attract um, you know, young people to your sport or those, all of those type of experiences, uh, whether you're a player or, or not as a volunteer, those are the types of experiences which will give you a really strong baseline before you actually step up and face some of the deeper challenges. So, um, you know, be brave, um, put your hat in the ring, especially for the women out there, because I see all the time women that are hesitant to step forward and put themselves into the process, but be brave, step up. You know, be the best that you can be in, in your experiences and try and make them as broad as you possibly can because, as I said at the top of this interview, the reality of being a sports CEO now is not just about understanding sport, it's also about understanding the business side of it as well. I'm just going to shoot you a couple of questions, which I've shared with you already, but I haven't shared with you some, and you just answer it spontaneously. Favourite car? Favourite car. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> um, M3 BMW. Favourite food? Modern Asian. Favourite holiday spot? It's very fortunate to go to Bora Bora a couple of years ago for Greg's 50th birthday, and it is as good as the picture postcards. It is a very special space in this world. And if you only had $10 in your wallet, Aussie, Kiwi, Malaysian, American, what would you do with it? If it was the last $10 I ever had, I'd probably yes. find, find my friends and see if we could get a drink for $5 somewhere and, and uh, sit together and have our, on a beach with a beer and uh, watch the sun go down. An actress that would play you in a movie. Someone has said to me one day, you should have Drew Barrymore. You were born in Wagga Wagga, Australia, but you grew up predominantly in New Zealand. Raylene Castle, are you a Wallaby supporter or an All Black supporter? I've always been an all-black supporter but uh, and want to see them do well, but um, I'll always have a, a special place in my heart for the Wallabies. And there's some people still there in the Wallabies who I was lucky enough to work with. And so, um, you know, I'd like to see them do well. Okay, so let's extend that question. New Zealand leading by one point, 14-13. Australia got the ball in New Zealand's 22. What do you wish for? <laughs> I just wish the referee doesn't decide the outcome of the game. Look, Raylene, it's been a very, very great conversation. Anytime you want to come back on Sunday Learnings with me, Ben Ibrahim, and tell some very good stories, rugby or not, you're more than welcome. And look forward to our friendship and keeping in touch and, you know, telling more great stories the Raylene Castle way. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. Spaghetti and the marshmallows.